Hey there viewers and welcome back to Grumpy Monkey Garage where we do listen to our audience and we're presenting you Cheap Truck Challenge. Now, unlike our $500 car challenge where we bought the cheapest piece of junk we could find and challenged them against each other, in this challenge, we're gonna be competing against something that you might actually reasonably buy, full-size trucks for under $2,000. Now, I've got my rules here because every challenge needs a set of rules to figure out who is the best cheap, full-size pickup truck that you can buy right now. So, of course, the force reel already said, it's got to be under $2,000. Now, over here we have the Ram. It's a 2005 Dodge Ram 1500 4.7, and it happens to have exactly 220,000 miles on it. Over here, we have a 1998 Ford F-150 with also about 220,000 miles on it, and it's a 4.6. 4.6, 4.7. Well, that's almost the same size. Now something I did want to talk about with these when we're comparing them to each other is what would you use a full-size truck for? Well, you're going to haul stuff and we've definitely, we've got some footage here of a ton of water heaters in the back of this truck. We've hauled a bunch of stuff with this one. We've hauled a bunch of stuff with this one as well, but I don't have footage of it. You'll just have to believe me. But you might haul things, but you might tow things as well. So for this challenge, it's all going to be based around towing and hauling what trucks are for. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna haul the Pontiac that you've seen in our other videos that we were thinking about restoring, maybe not restoring, weren't really sure. Well, I blew the engine up doing something really dumb and now I have no use for this Pontiac. So we're gonna hook up my car hauler trailer, which weighs a thousand pounds, to this Pontiac Grand Prix, which weighs 3,300 pounds. So for a 4,300 pound towing challenge, now the same trailer and car are gonna be used for both vehicles. And what we're gonna be testing for in this challenge is uh, fuel economy, that is how many miles to the gallon do these two trucks get towing and doing their job. Um, how many, uh, how, how stable it is, how it's handling when it's towing. Um, we're also going to talk about stopping power, that's very important when you have a trailer. Now we're hooking it to the same trailer, it does have trailer brakes, but it's going to be the same for both. Uh, and then uh, mirrors and the price point, which one of these is more affordable and you know, who, you, who can I see out the back easier with the mirrors. All right, talking about just the Ford now. What's good about this Ford and what's bad about this Ford? Well, I think it's gonna have an advantage in fuel economy. It's just been better gas mileage. It's gotten 16, 17 around town with no payload in the back, just driving it back and forth to the parts store to do things. It's gotten pretty good gas mileage. So I'm highly favorable that this is going to get the better gas mileage. Uh, I also think this is a better truck to buy. If you were going to buy a truck, you needed it for under $2,000, if you weren't towing anything and you were just hauling or you just wanted something to last you a long time, I think you're gonna get better longevity out of this because again, it hasn't gone through an engine or transmission yet in that many miles. Talking about the interior space is where it's going to hurt. As you can see in this footage here, the interior is a little cramped. There's not a lot of space. Now, in our full in-depth review on this truck, we talked about there are generations where it has two suicide doors in the back, it's a little more usable, and I prefer it because it gives me maximum bed space, and I actually work out of my bed, but that is something to consider that it does have small interior space. Now, is it a heavy tower? We'll be finding out, but it's, it's rated kind of low in my opinion, so we'll see how it performs onto the Dodge. Now talking about the Dodge, obviously I hate these giant pieces of junk. So uh, they, it does have advantages though. One, the crew cab. There's no doubting in my mind that it's easier to get in and out of a four-door truck than it is to get in and out of a two-door truck. So you do have that space advantage. Now for this price point, you can't get any other full-size truck with a crew cab for under two grand other than a Dodge. So if it's really a necessity for you to have a crew cab, you're limited to only this, so you don't have another option. Uh, another thing it does really well at is if you live in a neighborhood with an HOA where there are a bunch of communists and tell you what you can and can't own, this looks like a newer truck. You could probably pass it off as a 2012 or 2013 to a Karen who doesn't know what they're talking about. That Ford over there does look dated and old, whereas this truck still looks new. The styling still holds up in today's, you know, bougie truck aesthetic that they've got going on. Uh, I will say though that these have a lot more cost to maintain if you're looking at buying them. 20 inch rims, there's no getting around that. Those tires are expensive. 
Also, you're gonna be putting an engine in it every three years because it's designed by freaking idiots who are blind and dumb. So uh, yeah, it costs a lot to maintain this truck. Also, as you can see from some of our footage here, it has electrical problems. So the keys are right here. They're not, nothing is in the interior of the truck. Both keys are right here. Watch the windshield. Quality Dodge products. Every time you turn it on, the wipers are gonna go nuts when they work, and this time only one of them did. And then when you try to turn it off, the key is off. Truck is still running. This thing's a piece of shit. Right. So now, right in about now, you're probably screaming at the screen going, well, just replace the ignition switch. I did. It's still broken. I had the tumblers replaced. It's still broken. It's a wiring nightmare inside because it's a Chrysler product. Where do I think it's going to excel? Well, it already gets crap gas mileage, so I don't think it's going to excel there. I think it's going to excel because it's a larger truck, just physically larger and weighs more. I think that might help it handle a little bit better. These giant tires I complained about their cost are going to do something for traction. We'll find out, that's the purpose of the test. Now on to the challenge. So, all right, we're in the Ford. We've got the whole crew here. And they, uh, we were going to be towing. We had 214, 304 miles on the odometer. I did try to reset the trip odometer and, oh, is it gonna work now? Nope. So uh, in true Ford fashion, that's broken. I do have the overdrive switch off because the Dodge has tow haul mode and that basically is overdrive off. We're trying to keep this kind of sort of some sort of even. So I'm gonna take these turns a little wide. Uh, these mirrors are pretty small. I don't know how they're gonna stack up to the Dodge mirrors, but these aren't adjustable because they're power mirrors and in Ford fashion they don't work. So look at all the leaves flying off. <laughs> well I think the Dodge is stronger. I don't know, it, it may be stronger, but it's got hella issues. Acceleration that is foot on the floor 25, 30, 32, 35. I feel like I'm gonna blow the engine, I'm gonna backing off. Like it is just she is struggling. Uh, the trailer weight is 3,300 pounds for the car. There's nothing else in the car, I didn't like load it down or anything for the scrapyard. I was already talking a little bit about the differences, but now I'm gonna give you the specs and kind of the idea about this truck. It's a 98 F-150 4.6, which was made from 97 to 2004. Uh, the Ram, of course, was, they started manufacturing in 02. So there is a lot of overlap. These are of the similar years. Um, I couldn't get two 2002s to use. That's just not feasible on our budget. Uh, and you might be asking, well, in the $500 car challenge, you did three. Why are you not doing three? Well, because trucks cost a whole lot more than old, you know, poo boxes. So it's a, it's a little different to try to buy three giant towing vehicles. So I've done the right thing and bought the cheapest ones, the Dodge and Ford. And we're kind of fighting for who's the worst one. And then from there, we'll probably try to compete against either a Titan or a Silverado next. And I think the end result, if I may make a hypothesis, is a, this truck's gonna have better gas mileage and the Dodge is gonna have more stability because this thing is all over the road. Like every time we make a turn, the trailer wants to slide, the truck wants to slide. There's just no, there's no stability. 
Uh, both trucks uh, had oil changes before we did this challenge. So they're both on fresh oil. Um, they are both on clean air filters and they're both on crappy junkyard tires. So they have about the same tread and they're all crap, but they are stock size. So the Ram does have bigger wheels than this. I don't know how much that's gonna help. I do think it's gonna help a lot because they're fatter and they'll grip the road a little better. Um, but this has been pretty uh, freaking scary driving with this thing. Um, like right now I'm only doing 40 in a 50 because it's, uh, it's a little unstable back there. Feel that? I'm turning left, but we're not going left. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's a little, a little terrifying. That's the plan. Hypothesis, this truck doesn't break. I think it will get better gas mileage than the Dodge. I think the Dodge will be worse gas mileage, but better stability. I think that's gonna be the balance of power. However, if the Dodge is just as scary, I don't know why anyone would buy these trucks. <laughs> they should only buy this if the Dodge is just as scary, because I do think it's gonna get better gas mileage. Well, that's my hypothesis. I hate both of these trucks. That, that's all. Why do you hate both of these trucks? Dodge sucks, okay? They are always broken and they have the dumbest electrical problems. Oh, your blower motor doesn't work. Guess what? It's your ignition switch. And I know that because I've had to replace it three times. Um, I love Dodge. I hate Dodge. They just have a lot of really annoying issues. I am worried about the Dodge doing the Dodge Delete on the drive. That too. Their Classic wheels just like wheel to fall off. Wheels like to fall off and the one we got's in bad shape. Like you, you try to start it and one wiper goes like this. Just one, not the other one. Um, it's, got a, it's got a weird twerking thing going on in the back when you drive. Team um, Dodge all the way. Junk, both of them. Junk. Well, I married you, didn't I? Oof. <laughs> Damn. Damn, we're cutting. <laughs> Try to provide good entertainment at the cost of ourselves. The Dodge seems to be pulling a lot easier than the Ford, um, which is what I suspected. I figure it will. Oh, I need to reset this. I just pulled out of the gas station. Um, it certainly seems to have better stability. I mean, just already. I've only towed for, you know, seven miles or whatever from where we swapped the trailers. Uh, but um, it feels more confident, at least, to me. Uh, also, it's more comfortable, of course. We had a uh, Rachel back there telling us that it's a little easier. I get seat. a full door. Yeah, full-size door. I don't know, the handling of this is definitely
the squat is real. We are sitting on the back tires with the rear fenders. The Ford squatted pretty good, as you saw, but it did not. This thing just meet just on the floor immediately. So that was pretty aggressive. Um, I do think that the uh, the Dodge is more confident boosting while you're driving. It doesn't sway around as much. I think because it's so big, it's blocking all the airflow actually. So the air can't get to the sides of the trailer as easily to push the car around. So I think that its size is coming in really handy right now. Um, insert size matters joke. Anyway. <laughs> so uh, I, if I had to tow with one of these vehicles, I honestly am going to say the Dodge just because I think I can get more stuff done because I won't be worried about is the trailer swaying out of control as much as, oh, well, I don't have to worry about it. It's, it's right where I left it, right behind me. And this is with the exact same hitch. There's no special trickery. It's the exact hitch. I just pulled it out of the Ford and put it in the Dodge to hook up. So they are the same. Um, it's just, I feel more confident behind the wheel of this one, which is weird because I own a bunch of F-150s. I, this is the only Dodge I own right now. I have owned several, you can see in our Dodge review. But uh, I should be more confident in the Ford, just not just sways too much it's too narrow it's like a pencil whereas this thing's like a fat old turtle just <laughs> oh god i'm making animal noises on camera i've officially adapted some joe rogan-esque things we're doomed next i'm gonna be making badger noises, <laughs> gotta, make the gorilla noises. gotta make the gorilla noises i do feel safer in this though because that ford was making a lot of popping noises we were turning. Yeah, it was a little sketch. Might have been an axle. We're just gonna not acknowledge that. Um, but yeah, I mean, this one feels like it's pulling a lot better. That Ford was struggling, but my hypothesis is the same. They're getting around the same gas mileage so far. Through the powers of movie magic, we're back in the same parking lot where we started. Also, that was very depressing, crushing that poor, poor Pontiac. But at the same time, the trans was slipping, the engine was knocking and blown up, like a piece flew out of it. I don't think there was any saving it, so. We salute you, Pontiac, as you go forth. Now, who won the towing challenge for Cheap Truck Challenge? Well, fuel economy, as we saw at the pump, Ford, one point, ding, for the Ford, all right. Handling Dodge, hands down. It was so much more confident to tow with the Dodge. It was just, it, it was impressive. I really have to say, if I'm going to tow a car hauler ever again, I would use this truck over this truck just because it was so much more stable, it felt safer, I could go faster. Whereas this one, I was stuck at between 45, 50 miles an hour the whole time. This could actually do the speed limit and I wasn't really worried about the trailer going out of control. So, point to Dodge, ding. Stopping power, which one of them stops better? Point Dodge. This truck stops in a nice straight line, and it's not that either one of them was maintained any differently. Just with the trailer, this is so much bigger. The tires hold on a little better. It's just, it stops better. Point for Dodge. Mirrors, who had the better mirrors while towing? Point to the giant goat. And the price tag, which one of these trucks was cheaper? point to the giant goat. Now I do want to give Ford a little bit of credit here because it sounds like I'm about to tell it it lost this challenge because it did. This truck has lasted significantly longer with less maintenance and this truck did everything this truck did and it'll keep going. I'm sure this one's going to need a rear end shortly after this so what do you buy this one. But for the cheap truck challenge we'll announce a winner 
Behold the big one. Final thoughts on this. I do think that Dodges excel at towing. I think they just have been good for a long period of time. It's really difficult to explain why. I've hooked a Hemi to a trailer. I've hooked this 4.7 to a trailer now. They've both pulled really, really well and had consistent power. That tow haul mode really gets the shift points right when it works. So I've been really, really excited to see this one go through. Well, that's all we got time for for Grumpy Monkey Garage. We hope you enjoyed this challenge and we'll see you next time. Right now. Uh, Damn, we're keeping that in the video.